Hello everybody, welcome to the CCL Season 50 first round match between Thomas T and his Dark Elves and Jack Astai and his Undead. In the booth with me is Fimey, hello! Hello everybody, here we have a very interesting match with two coaches that don't pull any punches at all and let's dedicate this uh, game to our viewers in Tuvalu! Ooh! With the national flower, the plumeria, and they have the Union Jack in the flag of the country. So I guess it was visited by the British some time ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Um, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? He grabbed him there, but then didn't just block, didn't take the free block. Interesting. I might have taken the free block and blitzed this guy, but never mind. Um, PC will be joining us later. There is a big difference in TV here. Yak had a. Uh, Chef, which stole zero rerolls in the first half, and he's got a bribe, and he's got a wizard. Um, so that's that's quite a lot of TV difference, isn't it? Oh, and, and he's got this guy. Yes. Mm. Lona DP, Merc, Merc DP. Um, and he's, he's got a decent team, right? He's got two two pretty nice whites. Do, doesn't have pile on on either of them, but they've both got stand firm and guard and mighty blow tackle. And then uh, that's about all he's got on the team, to be fair. So it's, it's but it's good TV efficient, isn't it? Like the it got a bit bit of a bad matchup really because Thomas T's Dark Elves look amazing, absolutely amazing team here. I mean, I am back. Hello. The your stream. I'm obviously watching that as well as the um, the live stream. I'm watching your live feed as well as the Twitch stream. The live feed is in terrible definition. I can hardly make out what's going on. Yeah, but it will keep me ahead of the action. So that happens sometimes. Yeah, I can't. I can't control it. No. Nope. Sad. Sad times. <laughs> I guess they were visited by the British some time ago. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was a pretty good line. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a threat here, but he can obviously just move up, which he does instantly. So yeah, there's. I'm not really sure it was worth putting this little threat behind the lines. I mean, it's not much of a threat. It's perhaps more to just keep the cage honest, make sure he builds on all corners, but then I think against an elf team you do anyway, don't you? You can always assume they can be anywhere they want to be. Mm. Yeah, but Thomas is always super aggressive, so... Doesn't surprise me that he's already, you know, putting pressure all over the pitch. This is... Uh, I can say this is a little bit dodgy if he gets sent off here. He's going to have to tighten up the cage before he fouls, isn't he? It doesn't... Uh, the send-off here is really bad. I would have tightened up the cage before I fouled. Well, there you go. He gets sent off. But gets the cas, which is perfect, isn't it? And the apple. The trade uh, you'd take bribe going works. in, isn't it? Yeah, bribe works. But you know, if he gets sent off here, like the bribe can fail, right? Yes. And then there's the four plus in, which I didn't like. You could have just tightened that it's up. It's only a one in six, and it's not re-rollable unless you've another bribe. So. Yeah. So I feel like it was definitely worth tightening up the cage. Like I don't think this is doing a great deal there. So I it was a little yeah, I didn't hate the foul. I I hated that it was a little sloppily done. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and this is a bit of a bad blitz angle, isn't it, in that it keeps him in contact. But then, I guess that can be good if you can't get... I think he wanted the contact on that ghoul. I think power or no power, he'd have taken that square. Mm -hmm. I mean, contact on the ghoul's good, but just contact on the the guy that he's pushed, right? like that. Yeah. I mean, as Fermi said, he is extremely aggressive as a coach. He is, yeah, um, he's got... You always know if you're playing Thomas T, you don't have to go to him. He will come to you. Yep. And also he will uh, lose his own players. Already uh, turn three and he's three players now. Yep. He's, he yep. is chunted with normal dice. <laughs> yes, Sorry. that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> of course he does have the slightly higher armour to, to cope with some of those situations he continuously puts himself in. Um, yep. And he, he's perfectly capable of you know pulling out at the right time and trying to get a, a screen up ahead of the drive if he thinks that's the way to go, but it, it's not his natural choice. 
his natural choice is this, get up in your face with all my sidesteps yeah. and see if I can force turnovers. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the, on the on the stat line is higher. <laughs> whether, whether his actual arm. Oh, we, we've got a chain here, haven't we? Potentially. I don't know if it's good or not, but I mean. Oh, it's sidestep, so. Unless you could chain his own guy to sidestep somewhere. No. I wonder if there was a good player there. <laughs> I guess this, this exposes the. I was actually looking at um, chaining the sidestepping Dark Elf Blitzer around the corner onto it. Yeah, something that could have happened. By getting the witch around the back of the mummy and doing it using the one that wasn't knocked over last turn, but... I mean, I, I guess getting it away from the, the huge mass of players it was in is... You know, and, and isolating it and getting tackle zones and tackle on it is, is aggressive in itself, isn't it? Yeah. Here we go, the tackle mighty's getting to do things now. Yeah. Now he gets to nail the witch, doesn't he? Huge hit here. Oh wait, wait, what? What? He can hit yeah, the that... witch. He's, Why he's, would he's got guard? Who's he's also on your ball carrier? And there's there's a strength four witch elf on your ball. Yeah. <laughs> with block and tackle. And you Presumably blitz. he's hitting it with the ball, and which again the does not seem. A good choice to me. No, I mean, that's crazy. Okay, so by going in there, he is at least pushing her outside of just, you know, a two plus and I'm hitting the ghoul again. But it's it's not hard, Jim. No, I, I hate this. I hate this from you. I would be thinking, now how am I... In which of the ways am I getting dice on the ball here? Not am I. Huge cast though. Apple half works. <laughs> Stops the death. And it, yep, this is a classic Thomas T game. <laughs> yeah, yep. down five players in turn five, yep. <laughs> all over the ball. Yep. And could possibly turn it over. Yeah. Yeah, absolute Thomas T to a to a Thomas um, T to a T. <laughs> <laughs> to a Thomas T. <laughs> it was just too obvious, wasn't it? Oh, it doesn't use the stand firm on the second one. Wow. Why So we're just gonna let the strength four witch hit our ball, are we? That's we're fine with that. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? After using on the first one, because he used it on the first one when it would have been into a one d. So if you if you know what I mean, like the first the first hit, he did he he used stun firm on the first hit. Whereas if he hadn't used it on the first hit, the second hit would have been a one d because of guard. And again, we're going for isolating the ball rather than actually hitting it. Which, I know it was only a one die, because the one die he tried to get to cancel the assist didn't work, but... Well, there's guards, so it had to be an uphill, I don't think there was any way. Because he couldn't cancel this assist, right? Yes, he couldn't, yeah. So it was, it was into a, uh, effectively a strength five. Yeah, which is... Or he'd had to have dodged in to cancel the assist, at which point, you know, the advantages may be lost. Like he's still doing well to get in the way, isn't he? He's turned, turned six here and Yaks again hit with a ball carrier. Yep. Which you could argue that, you know, on turn six he shouldn't be, but he's got just enough time. And I guess there's not really enough elves to really get in the way, but. I, this block. I, I mean, I felt it was all done to get this, to get mummy hits and that mighty blow hit, and I, I still don't love where the ball is, Jim. But there is time, but there's also time for. Thomas T to pull everything out now and, and form a nice screen. Mm. And this is what he does. He's very, very aggressive until exactly this point of the drive. When he's starting to lose too many elves, but he's got just enough probably to get back in front of you and stop you scoring. Yeah. I, I mean, if it works, it's going to be a fabulous half from him. I guess he, he's got sure hands, so the uphill isn't as bad. The, the uphill would... Oh, okay, it's not... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It is that bad. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't have been that bad if he hadn't, like you know, the, the show hands made the uphill. Not that's why he didn't care so much about the, the uphill, right? If if he had, didn't have show hands, he would he would have stopped the uphill, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I still didn't like it because yeah, he's he's got just about enough, hasn't he? He's got a bit of a screen and he's knocked the ball down. It's like yeah, I could have just played. And you can punch a hole in the screen, but probably not with enough to keep the ball safe if he actually had the ball, which at the moment he doesn't. Need a hand, no. 
No, I think this is a bit a bit crap from Yak. Like, you know, to make these five removals and then not have the ball safe and And I know that's how I know how that's Thomas T plays and everything, and you know he's got he's got loads of blood step and and L, so you know, maybe you can get hits on the ball, but I mean, you've got to beat over your opponent's half on turn six, haven't you? <laughs> when you've removed five players, you should you be really in your opponent's yeah. Half. But again, I think we're in a situation where there were blocking patterns where Yak didn't expose himself quite so brutally, but it was slightly less blocks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think and then who knows? Perhaps he'd have been facing, you know, seven or eight elves. So it's, uh, it's so hard True. to double catch these things. True. But I think even then, I think even after he after he'd made the removals, there was things that he could have. You know, I, I think it was a little bit. Well, you know me and my priority on space, so I'm, I'm perpetually seeing other people not prioritise it to the degree I do. Yeah, yeah. I think I think sometimes you prioritise it too much, um, but yeah, I think I, that's I think, fair. I think he has definitely not prioritised it enough. Wow, it's a brutal cars. Phil <clears throat> Regen. Jesus, what a game! I was expecting things from this game. I'm not disappointed. Yeah, it's cra been a crazy game, hasn't it? Three it has. cards for the undead is just brutal. All regen fails. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you expect Thomas T to be for taking the attrition he's taken because that's how he plays. But he's also got that attrition and continuously got hits on the ball. Some of which I remind you, he just has chosen not to take. Yep. Just to keep that pressure up and to keep up the, the play style, which is just constantly in your face. Yep. This is nice that he gets the chain forward, isn't it? Makes up for the space the witch elf cost him, and gives him a nice easy score with the pal. Mm, well, he might be regretting. He might be regretting using the reroll last turn on that GFI because he's going to have to do two GFIs to, no, one GFI to score, no, two GFIs. Blitzing it off. Okay, that's. Mm. Yeah, but the problem was GFI. like he chained forward, but he still had to do a GFI to hit, which was yeah, not great. Okay, he gets it. Phew. His one reroll was the perfect amount. <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, What's I think it's problem? insane to go into a knockout format with overtime possible and that few rerolls, but it continually seems to work for him, so there's something there I'm missing. Hmm. Well, it what consistently gets him qualified. I don't think it consistently gets him past the first round. <laughs> exactly, Jack is tends to die on the first round. <laughs> He managed to qualify because the yes, ultra efficient, uh, TV efficient. But other than that, it's like very difficult to do anything without the few rewards. Mm. Yeah, heart of the dice. That's it. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's really good for for the uh, for for ladder. Because you just you know you're facing lower TV teams and you're really efficient and all you've got to do is play super conservatively and you know save your rerolls and it's all right, isn't it? Why did he put four players on the LOS? Did you know I did? <laughs> like, isn't that just better than not have him there? If you like, if you're gonna put yeah. this guy on the LOS, you just don't want him there. Oh, he's floating. I didn't realise PC's avatar was floating. I don't know why it's floating. Who knows? What's it to know? No, oh, because it's not at the bottom. Man. How weird is that? I don't know why it isn't at the bottom. I must have liked I don't something. actually have a groin, so it's quite accurate. <laughs> it's just a step above us. I must have stretched it somehow. There we go. Wait, we've got it. That's much better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but no, 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 it's because it was stretched. That's why it floats. Because it was stretched is why it floats. Okay, well. Fuck, that's so, so annoying. It's, it's because I stretched it. That's why it fucking does it. Super annoying. Super annoying. Okay, well there you go. He's not floating anymore. 
Right, so now the chef steals one reroll. I mean, if he'd stolen three, it'd have been pretty good, but he just hasn't got that much tackle, has he? Well, he had two, but then he's he's lost one. Like, that's a huge, that's a huge Kaz for Yak, isn't it? Yes, Balas is missing next game uh, at least. So... No dead dead elves, so no free recruits either. Yep, true. How many are we on? Three, six, nine undead. And three, six, nine, ten dark elves. So yeah, this is this is actually... He's been outbashed, hasn't he, yeah? Essentially. Yeah. The, the, you know, two cast to three. So despite how brutal that half was with the five removals, he's actually been outbashed. So yeah, this is... Uh, Looking real yeah, because here. Thomas knows presumably his own playstyle. He does tend to bring a bench if he possibly can. Mm. You know, he yeah. knows his elves don't live. <laughs> he usually doesn't have the chance to have bench, so yeah, it's a <laughs> new pleasure for him. Yeah, sometimes it's good to have have reserves as undead and, and you know, reserves and re-rolls, but, you know, <laughs> poor things shouldn't buy yak. <laughs> Look, Regen is like 50% of having a reserve anyway, so... That True. idea, Jim. Do you think this idea of, you know, keeping the re-rolls very low and making sure all of your TV is on the pitch, do you think that could transfer to, say, Dwarves? <laughs> it can. It can for Ladder, not I so much might, for... I not might so try much. that. Yeah, not so much for playoffs, though, right? It's, it is no, really good for Ladder, but no, not so much perhaps for not very successful in the playoffs themselves, yeah. Like all right, obviously. Do you know what I mean? But just not. You'd rather have a two k. You'd rather have a two k dwarf team than than any amount less than two k. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yes, though the biggest one I ever took uh, got knocked out in round one by some pro elves with a wizard. Mm. So you know that can happen too. <laughs> it can. It can, but it's you know it's it's a bit like obviously you, you know you wouldn't want a two thousand TV because it's got loads of move up long beards, but you know no, you want, it's yeah, sensibly built. Built as I would build a two thousand TV dwarf team. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow! Instant. You wouldn't want to pick it up. Eats the dubs. Well, I think that's that's probably right, isn't it? Mm. It's not like he can afford to use no. those rolls. It's like, is this the thing I re-roll, or is this not the thing I re-roll? Although he is up to two, which is, you know... Oof, oof. Glorious pylon animation. You don't get to see that that much. And there you go. Look how good piling on is. That takes care of the... And, you know, if he'd had that extra re-roll, he would have re-rolled that, and then maybe this guy doesn't get hit, and then, you know, it's a, you know maybe it's really cost him not re-rolling that. Who knows? I hate that that worked. I really don't like piling on elves, but there we are. <laughs> It's so good, though, isn't it? It's so good. That's, that's it, the it thing. certainly can work. Yep. The odds, the odds are what they are. The, the, the stats don't lie, and they spell disaster for people getting piled on. And uh, Yak certainly doesn't have enough to foul it back, really. So it's in a fairly safe spot on the ground. Yep. Correct. And it was against a good target, so it is one that if I had piling on, I would have piled on too. But exactly, there's you don't so many times I wouldn't use it. Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? But that is the thing, like, that when you do use it, it can be completely devastating and game-winning, so it's like... Yeah, I mean, he's taken it there as a fourth skill after he's already designated that as his hitter with, you know, tackle and mighty blow. So at that point, I don't hate leading into it, mm. but I would still not be using it, you know, very often. But as a fourth skill, once you've already built the kill stack and the rest of the team is functioning, yeah, sure. Mm. Not for me, but I'm not as critical as if it was, you know, if you'd gone mighty blow and instantly piling on, I'd think, oh, really... <laughs> and now, I mean, <laughs> now he's just Pilo. fucked, isn't he? He's got how many? Seven players <laughs> versus elves? Jesus Christ. I mean, I think I pretty much explicitly said that, yes. <laughs> it worked, but I, I do yeah. think it's mostly shit. I've just always found that without Claw, I'm mostly using piling on to finish off teams I'm already beating. Yes, yeah, that, that's, that's the not, problem. That's yeah. not really something I value hugely. Yeah, that, that was my thoughts with my Amazon team. It's like, God, I just wish I'd taken guard because against like all the teams that I'm struggling against, I want guard yeah. and not piling on. 
it comes, you know, but then, you know, you can high roll with piling on, like at the end of the day, like versus Wood Elves or whatever, you'd rather have piling on to just try and high roll them, wouldn't you? So, yes, and I mean, it's, it's also about mindset. I mean, I'm the type that I want every ruthless point zero one percent I think I can find, and some people actually play for fun, and they find piling on fun and getting removals fun, and that's, you know, that's their meta, that's what keeps them in the game, so good luck to them. I mean, but also, you know, you can have the attitude of wanting every 0.1% and then that's why you take piling on, right? So Yeah, because there's always room for disagreement and statistics to be interpreted. And, you know, nothing is proven 100% factually. Some people still think the world's flat, for goodness sake. <laughs> but especially in Blood Bowl, like, none of us know what the best no. things are, do we? No. I've checked, no. by the way, and those people aren't taking the piss. Some of them really do seem to believe that. Jesus. Oh, I mean, I yes, could... yes, yes, there are people uh, very, very convinced and even doing experiments and all that. Yes, know? I know. They're, they're, they're uh, against the scientific community and then doing the most rubbish experiments you've ever seen to try and prove their nonsense. <laughs> but I'd always assumed it was just ironic, but apparently no. Well, you could put a spirit level on the ground, wouldn't you, and it'd say it was flat, so there you go, point proven. <laughs> Check, yeah. Checkmate, scientists. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> The part that I find, you know, even yes, even more complicated wow. is like the why. Why, you know, all the planet is in a conspiracy to say that the planet is round when truly it's flat. You know, I mean, this I mean, is the big problem with all conspiracy theories. Is have you met people? They're <laughs> rubbish at keeping secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the best thing about WikiLeaks, wasn't it? You know, like, oh, we're gonna finally find out, like, you know, who killed JFK. You know, were the moon landings fake? No, we're uh, just gonna find out that like Obama called, you know, Princess Philip a dickhead and stuff like that's in there. They're like the earth-shattering secrets. <laughs> coin Earth. What the hell is Coin Earth? Before? I'm certainly not convinced there's an Australia. <laughs> well, you're until a thing, someone, isn't there? There's like this. Until someone takes me there and, and puts me up in a good hotel for a couple of weeks, I will not be convinced. But how do you know that your plane has actually flight there if the heart is flat? Well, I, again, I did think as a child that perhaps when you take off in an airplane, you just stay up in the air and they change all the scenery and you land at the same place. <laughs> <laughs> You do the kick travel like in the video games. Yeah. <laughs> Just a load of the screen, you know. <laughs> and you get that feeling that one day you're going to turn the corner and, and the big hand is going to be reaching down from the sky, still putting all the cars in place. <laughs> no, just me. Oh, no. Okay. To be fair, flying's pretty fucking weird, isn't it? It is weird. Oh, wow, he accepts the dub skull and gets cast. Only uh, again, what options do they have with this low rerolls and an expected outcome of overtime at the moment? Yeah, but the level of punishment is brutal, you know, for not re-rolling. Nafel is uh, beating them with a stick here. Yeah. Well, if the English public school system is to be believed, it'll be good for them and they'll end up Prime Ministers. <laughs> oh, dear. That's, that's actually not as stupid as it sounds, Paul <laughs> I mean, it is stupid, obviously, but at least that—at least with that, you could you could justify you could justify it. Uh, it's a way to justify flat Earth, I guess. But it's uh, still obviously bonkers. If anyone would believe, actually believe it, it'd be insane. <laughs> because I did look into it, having assumed it was a piss take. Um, it turns out there's a schism within the flat Earth theory. Those that believe we are just one sort of Earth, bounded by obviously an ice wall. Um, and they're unsure what is outside of the ice wall. <laughs> so it's sort of like we're in a Petri dish. And another theory, um, which about a third of them seem to believe in, that we are one of many of these sort of Petri dishes on some sort of surface and plane. And if we actually got high enough, we'd be able to see over to where another dish of humanity was living. Wow. I mean, they're obviously both complete bonkers, but <laughs> why they should disagree, I don't know. Well, I mean, why wouldn't they disagree, I guess? Once you're already that far down yeah, <laughs> the insanity yeah, hole. <laughs> there is, you know, there is uh, levels and, uh, you know, self-denial. And when people have been doing it for so many years, yes, that's it. You just keep going down. I mean, there's levels of all of this. My in-laws uh, didn't get the original vaccines. 
when we asked them why not, the name of Bill Gates did crop up. So they've been down one of those little ridiculous holes, haven't they? My uncle uh, still doesn't believe in the moon landing, and he was uh, old enough to watch it live. <laughs> yeah, well, we've all got people like that in our families. My sympathy to you. Yeah, that, that the, is all right. The, the thing about the the moon landings is, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's just like, you know, I love how like people like everyone kind of thinks that governments are incompetent. Yet for this one particular thing, they're going to be yeah. unbelievably competent and keep it a se secret forever. <laughs> you know, with the, with with the help of the Soviet Union, you know, and all that. So it was all the planet. <laughs> You know, getting together and making the Americans reach the moon like five times. <laughs> but yeah, I have friends also that don't believe in that. And uh, one of them thinks that the first one is the fake one. The others were real. But the first one was the fake one because the image quality was very bad. Oh, yeah. Well, the first one being the fake, like that kind of makes sense. Like, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong when I say this. But it makes sense that if you, you know, you would... If you were gonna fake one, you'd fake the first one to win the race. If you were like super close to actually doing it for real, you could fake the first one so that then you you would win the race, and then you could do the real ones. And then it would look add legitimacy to the first one. So that there's a certain amount of logic behind believing that, isn't it? A certain amount of logic. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but if you were gonna fake them, you'd get someone like Stanley Kubrick, one of the, the greatest <laughs> film directors of the day, to do it because obviously he'd have that eye that would make it look real. Yeah. Yes. Except yes. in the part that he was in a very friendly with the American government in general, but or any government in general, but for that job, <laughs> he's yeah. the sort of guy he'd never be able to keep that secret. He'd have to sort of layer some clues into his films and things, wouldn't he? Yeah. There are people. There are people that look into that. Into the thing. they say that the, in the movie The Shining, the little kid is wearing a jumper with a rocket and the, or something like that, and that's a proof. The next thing you'll be saying that, that one of the carpets looks like it's a signal as well. I mean, it, it's mad for me. <laughs> then you'd Once say he got killed off after he'd made uh, Eyes Wide Shut as well, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whose entire name was, of course, a clue as to how in the dark humanity is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah correct. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to some degree, I envy, I envy these people, you know, because they live in such a world that is so interesting, you know, everybody a spy, <laughs> silly like that, you know, going to the grocery store is like an adventure there, you know, <laughs> avoiding the CCTV cameras and all that. I mean, that's the real problem, isn't it? It's, it's a lack of sort of grown up attitude to life. It's it, exceptionalism. It's thinking that you are special and you've worked something out that no one else has. Yes, this um, big secret, this big secret has been keeping yeah. for thousands of years. Millions of people all over the world doesn't know, but my uncle Stan has worked it out. Just... <laughs> yeah, all right, Stan. Have another brandy and sit down. Eh? Dessert's coming soon. <laughs> the thing with the blood ball pictures are flat. <laughs> well, I think they're made of glass, just coloured green. Because when you fall over, you so often die. <laughs> My big conspiracy theory is that the dice aren't actually skewed against anybody. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of takers for that, Jim. Well, you go to the comment section on Steam on the game. There are people saying that the game is rigged, especially favorite streamers and all that. The streamer dice, yeah. conspiracy is real. I was going to say, thousands of people on Reddit saying that in real life they get better dice than they ever do online. Can't be wrong, can it, Jim? <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I'm sorry, I, I overstepped the mark there. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, this was a game and a half, wasn't it? Yeah, five players. He just puts them all in the LOS. He's like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Completely zoned out, fair enough. Well, I mean, I'd actually love to see Thomas get a deep run, um, because as we said, he does play a very aggressive style of Dark Elves, which I do myself. Um, <laughs> but he's, you know... Once a year. <laughs> it's like he's on PCP or something sometimes, isn't it? He's relentless with it. Um, and Yak, I mean, it's traditional. He gets knocked out of the first round, and we all say build a better team, and he laughs and builds one with, you know, one re-roll and <laughs> half a ghoul. <laughs> we'll make chalice with it next time. Skeletons instead of zombies. 
Yeah, I think that's, that's for speed howling, doesn't it? But you has been massively dice. He's filled every KO on every every yeah. every region and every KO, and he's taken more than you'd expect anyway. Okay, he hasn't fired the whiz off. Do you think he's going to fire the whiz off? Is he going to bother? He might I fire think he's gonna players. he's gonna ball someone. Yes, probably maybe one of his own players. That yeah, would be very on brand. <laughs> And you couldn't call it a sort of action that gave the opponent an SPP generating advantage, so I'm not sure it's bannable. <laughs> if he acts earned his ticket, Steve, why shouldn't he? Do you know what I loved? I loved when, when Storr wrote down every time he failed a one in nine. <laughs> he didn't he didn't write when he like passed them. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was playing halflings and just every time every time there was a one in nine and like he would he would occasionally put down when he passed one you know but like <laughs> he would he would maybe like write four four one in nine fails and then one out of ten passes and stuff <laughs> it was pretty great we all used did we have a... he's got a one d on the ball here yeah and we have a whiz in hand why yeah I'd rather use the whiz oh he, he used the whiz to get the one d to get the one d well, this could be a win situation, except it isn't, because... But he got another cast, and that's a... <laughs> not dead. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a chance here, right? There's a, he, there is. Thomas T has got to roll a 1 in 36 at some point. Oh, okay. yeah, he's moved him there, so... This is this is interesting, isn't it? Either he dodges, yeah, he dodges, so here we go, 1 in 36, and he'd be in not a lot of trouble, but something could have happened, couldn't it? It could. And now he's and got so a dodge. Oh, he's rolled away! Why go there? However... Yeah. Oh, my Ooh. God. Oh, my God. Oh, and that's the last oh. reroll that this game will see. Oh. But, two plus works. He's gone, he's won, it's done. Yeah. Well, that was, that was, there was a little bit of excitement, nearly. Nearly, like, you know, if he double won that dodge out, there would have been a shot for it, yeah? Well, your mother wouldn't tell you to play Blood Bowl like that, but it's worked. <laughs> yeah, Bob yeah, still sees a big there. comeback coming in here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the lower TV, the worst players you play, right? Because generally, generally, if somebody's, you know, made a... If you're getting games at 1600 TV, you're playing somebody... Who's at least played enough games to get the 1600 TV? So, this dodge off diving tackle there. That's always yeah. fun to see. He, he was going for the classic uh, foul on the diving tackle player. <laughs> yeah, the classic. Why did he fell to the ground and then foul him? Yeah, it's better when you do that yeah. on fumble. It's better when you do that on fumble because you declare a foul when there's nobody on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you declare you, your foul you action. Go, so are you using diving tackle or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not pretty good. Right, well there you go. That was a game and a half, wasn't it? That was unbelievable. 13 AV breaks, 4 KOs and 6 cars. Yeah. And well hey look, when, when you play as aggressive as Thomas T plays, sometimes it, you know the high roll's going to get going like your Norse. Mm. And then suddenly there won't be much of a team opposite you. And that's where we got to eventually. Although the undead matched them a bit, didn't they? I mean, they got plenty of removals themselves until suddenly they were not really there anymore. Yeah, he made two regens when it didn't matter, didn't he? And he, yep. he made the wake up KOs after they didn't matter as well. So, yeah, that was a pretty much an absolute. That's, that's, an that's absolute absolutely hard. Very, very hard. Yeah. It's I mean, the re regen is a breaker, isn't it? I remember when I, in the Chalice final, when I killed that wolf and it regen, that I could, you know, I could feel my heart sinking 10%. <laughs> Would have been so huge to remove it, but regen is so powerful. Yep. Correct. Half of the time it is. Yeah. Yeah, half of the time. But there you go. I mean, you know, played well, didn't he? And, you know, had the better team. So congrats to Thomas T. Commiserations to Yakka Stai. Thank you. Yep, well played, much. Thomas. Yep. Thank you very much. PC and find me. Absolutely glorious as always. It's always a pleasure to be here. And a hello to our Tuvalu viewers that I suspect there are not many viewers because. The population is not even 12,000 people, but still, and has the size of 26 uh, square kilometers, so very tiny place, but we remember you, Tuvalu. <laughs>
brilliant. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.